this video is for those who are going to be purchasing my Pitched Vocals Tutorials DVD. We are right now in Persona Studio One Pro version 2.5. And since this is the program that I am using in the DVD tutorials, I think it's best if you learn how the tracks and the routing for the buses and send effects works. That way when you're watching the DVD, you're not lost in the dark as to what I am doing. First, let's look at tracks. These are my tracks. They all have audio on them. These are vocals. I'm going to zoom into the track right here, this lead vocal track. I'm going to kind of slide in here. Now, these events that you see here are on this lead vocal track. I will play them now. Throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky. Keep it real, but... It's just my vocals. So if I come over here to the mixer, now notice this says lead. This is my lead track. And I have this input which is my microphone and the output which goes to the main channel strip and I'm looking at that through my inspector so on the tutorial DVD I open the inspector and you get to see my routing now you see it's going to the main well let's go look at it in the mixer view so remember that lead track is soloed if I come over here and I find my lead track channel strip here it is so if I play audio you should see the audio here however also the main is my output so this track is going out if you can not picture audio going out and coming into this main strip which is the main strip for the whole program right now throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky so as you see I have audio coming from this track where the audio events are but this tracks going out to my main which is over here here are two other tracks I will enable those and they're my stress overdub tracks. It's where I come in and add emphasis to certain words. So I will solo them. And then I'll play them with the lead vocal. Okay, so you see what that's doing. Now, as you can see, this one's going out to the main also and this one's going out to the main. All these tracks right now are going out to the main bus. I am panning this one to the left with this panner left 60 and this one's to the right 60. Let's go check out these two tracks in the mixer. So here they are. There's my lead vocal then there's my stress left and my stress right. You can see I got it panned to the left 60% and this one's to the right 60%. Now when I play these they should all have audio on them and be going to this main. These three right here. Throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky. So there we go we verified that. So as you can see, these tracks are being outputted to my main. Plain and simple, right? Well, what I like to do is I like to send audio to buses so that I can add effects. You might see a lot of people on YouTube, especially in Adobe Audition, what they do is they actually double click on this. It comes up in an editor and then they add an effect to it one at a time. They might go add audio effect and then they add an a EQ and then they'll process it and then they'll add another effect. You do not want to work in that fashion. You cannot undo it once you save it. The way that you work in the industry is by using the track to put effects onto the track or onto the bus that you send it to. Well, what's a bus? Let's go find out what a bus is. So this is what a bus does. I have this track here. I want to send it to a stereo bus because maybe I want to add some stereo reverb and stuff like that on it. So right now this is a mono track. I'm going to send it to a stereo bus and sending stuff to buses will make more sense once we get to these two tracks here. So I'm going to right click this one and inside of this program, let me right click up here. All I do is I click add bus for selected track because that track is selected. When I do that, if you notice my output now for this track in the inspector shows bus one and it's also created it. So let's go to bus one in my mixer. Let's go find it. There it is right next to that track. I'm going to double click it. I'm going to name it lead Vox. I'm basically renaming it so I can know what it is. And now I'm going to color it and I color mine yellow. So now I'm now going to drag this all the way to the right because I like them all the way to the farthest right portion of the mixer. So now I got this lead bus and what I could do with this lead bus is I could throw compression, equalization, any type of effect I want in this insert section. That's where I will put the effects up here. However, if I want reverb, I will dial in what's called a send effect, which we're going to look at shortly. But I'm not done busing. Let's do another bus. So basically what's happening right now is that audio is going out to that lead vox bus 
and then it's going to the main bus so it goes out to here so let's verify that first so i'm going to solo this one only let's come to the lead vocal let's go here here's the lead vox now of course we have the lead right here so let's see we see the audio on this because that is the lead track that track's going here to this lead vox yep and then this one is going out to the main so now it's going there so let's go bust one more thing and then we can start throwing in some reverb and stuff now for these two tracks here my stress left and stress right where i just come in and add emphasis to certain words i'll play those again bills in the sky all right i want to have a different compression and different eq and separate reverb for these to make them sound a little different from the lead vocals well you could just throw compression on the track but reverb this is a mono track okay and I want this all going to a stereo bus because I want to treat both these tracks listen to what I'm saying here both these tracks together however maintain the stereo separation that is one's pan to the left one's pan to the right so I need to send them to a stereo bus. When these two tracks are sent to that stereo bus, this left track will still seem to come from the left, and this right track will still seem to come from the right because it's a stereo bus. So let's do that now. I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna hold control and select this one. I'm gonna right click and say add bus for selected tracks. It's named bus one again. Well, that's because I had renamed the other one. So it's just naming in consecutive order. And since there are no other buses named bus one, it's going to name a bus one again. So let's go check it out in the mixer. Let's go find that bus that it just made. Here it is. So basically this track and this track are going to this bus. So any audio on this track, which is panned left 60%. And this one right 60% is going to come here. And those two tracks are still going to maintain their stereo separation. So I'm going to rename this. Lead stress. That tells me it's my lead vocals with the stress emphasis. I will then recolor it yellow. And I will then drag that one all the way to the right, right next to that one. Now let's verify that the audio is definitely going from the tracks over here, which is my stress left and stress right. Let's go ahead and play those. They are soloed. So let's go here. Right here we should see audio on these two tracks. All right, it's, those two are going to the lead stress. And if I come over here to the lead stress bus, I should see audio. Now this one's going out to the main. So it should be going to the main output. Yes, it is. And as we can see, we have two bars here, which signifies that it is stereo. Now, let's move on. You will see many people on YouTube, and they're usually using programs like Adobe Audition. What they do is, in order to put effects on a vocal or something, they will double-click it bring it up in editor view, right click it, add an effect by going audio, effect something such as EQ, then they'll click process, which will process and change the waveform with EQ, and then they'll add a compressor, process it, but here's the problem. When you go file save and you close your session, turn off your computer, come back the next day, there's no going back, unless you save sessions after everything you do, all right? So that is not how you want to handle it. Now, you can, in Studio One and some other programs, add effects directly to the event, which I will cover, um, but we'll get to that shortly. So why have I bust this stuff? What is the purpose? Well, of course, I got the lead vocal. This is a mono track. It can be changed to stereo, but it's mono. But I need stereo effects such as reverb to be going to it and when that happens i'm going to be dialing in what's called a send or effects or on some programs called an aux now these two i wanted them going to the same bus yet still maintain their stereo separation of left and right so i sent them to a stereo bus called the stress lead stress right so why well because i'm going to compress this one and add eq and reverb separately from what I'm going to do to this one. I want a different compression ratio, a different attack, a different release for these two, and I want it to be separate from these. 
So let's go do that now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide over to my lead vox bus, which is where those lead vocals are going. And my here's my lead stress. So when I play this, throw a lot of dollar a la bills in this. Verify there is audio on those. I'm going to grab an EQ. And this is all you do. I In the insert section, I can drop an EQ. All right. And I can just copy it over. But before I do that, I'll just set a typical setting of a high pass filter, about 24 decibels per octave roll off. You know, up to like 100 hertz. Um, you might boost some high frequencies if you're into that kind of thing. So, you know, give a little boost on the top end. You might remove some mud from this area. All right. So let's go do that. Now, I'm just going to copy this over. And basically, I have both the same EQ now. And one is processing the lead vox, and the other one is processing the lead stress. Let's add a compressor. Just going to drop the standard compressor here. I'm just going to set up a 4 to 1 ratio somewhere around there. I'm going to turn off the knee, turn off look ahead, leave stereo link on. I'm going to set the attack on this one kind of slow. Let's say mm, 5 milliseconds. A release kind of fast. 70 milliseconds. I'll leave it on adaptive. And I will turn it off actually. And here we go. So the compressor set up to compress. And what's happening now is the lead vocal from that lead vocal track, which is right here, or also right here, let me solo it, is going out from this track. Picture this, coming from the top of this strip and going through each of these processors in succession. So first it's going to go through my EQ, then it's going to go to my compressor. I usually do subtractive EQ and some correction EQ first before I send it to my compressor. Everybody does things differently. So let's see that. Let's see if we're actually getting audio on this track from the lead. Yes, let's see if we're getting some EQ going. I'll bypass EQ. This is my bypass button. I can turn it on and off with this button to listen to the effect that's happening. Let's go check my compressor. I am not getting no compression at this time, so I'm going to bring down the threshold. Throw a lot of dollar a la bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters going to try. Bring us down, but I'll be like, nah. Now that's a pretty low threshold, which means my input gain is kind of low, so I can actually do this. Throw a lot of dollar a la bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters going to try. Bring us down, but I'll be like, nah. So I got some compression going on. So I am now EQing, and then that EQ is sending it to the compressor, and then whatever I add after that, it's going to do that next. So if I add another EQ, and let's say if I do some different settings, like I found out that maybe around this frequency after compression, it maybe changed the sound a little bit, then I just want to add some presence. Throw a lot of dollar a la bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters gon' try. Bring us down, but I'll be like, nah, uh. You think you fly, but you know that's a lie. I'll just add the high pass here also. Throw a lot of dollar a la bills in the sky. So now it's going to my EQ, my compressor, then my EQ. Okay, cool. Well, I could just copy this over. Good to go. Copy this one over. Good to go. And now let's work on the uh, lead stress element. So these vocals are now going to come through onto this bus from their track, and I'm going to check out the compression. Throw a lot of dollar a la bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters going to try. All right. Interesting. So let's go check out the EQ. Throw a lot of dollar a la bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters going to try. So as you can see, the audio is going through this EQ to my compressor, then to my EQ. Throw a lot of dollar a la bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters gonna try. Bring us down, but... And I can now adjust the volume of those tracks with this slider here, which is my volume slider. So there is no double clicking and adding processing in editor view because you will not be able to hear it. You want to hear all of your effects while you're mixing. It's called mixing. You want to be able to hear everything that's happening in real time while you play your audio so you can make your adjustments. A lot of dollar, dollar bills in the sky. And for something like this on a stress overdub type, I would use a faster attack basically to smooth over the transients to make it seem a little bit further back. And I would probably use an 8 to 1 ratio higher ratio, which is going to have to make me change my threshold. 
throw a lot of dollar all the bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters gonna try. Of course, you would be doing all this while listening to your instrumentation and other instruments that may be playing in the mix. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I got the instrumental on. Let's listen. Throw a lot of dollar all the bills in the sky. So when you're mixing, you need to take into account everything. So you need to adjust compression and EQ while you are listening to the instrumentation. Now, so I got some compression, some EQ going on. Well, okay, sounds good. What about reverb? How does that work? There are many ways that reverb work. Depending on the type of reverb and what you're going for and how much processing power you have, I could simply throw the EQ, the reverb sorry, onto this actual track here and just use it as an insert. However, if I know that I want to use the same reverb on here and here, but maybe with different amounts of reverb, I can save processing power by setting up what's called a send. And inside Studio One, it's basically called an FX track. Now to create an FX channel inside of Studio One that I can put like reverb and stuff on, you can click anywhere because it's not going to actually route whatever you click to it. So I'll just click here and I'll say add FX channel. And I will rename this to lead verb. I use a separate reverb for my lead elements and a, another reverb. I might set up another FX channel for another reverb that can push things to the back of the mix using the settings, of course, and then I will change this color to red. That's just my preference. I know my effects are red, my buses are yellow. So there's that. We've added the effects channel. Now, I got my Lee Reverb effects channel, so let's throw a reverb on it, shall we? There we go. Got a little reverb. All right, so let's close that. Now, I may have caused a little confusion for you earlier when I said... When I was mentioning, you know, the lead vocal track being mono and not wanting to put any reverb on it, if I do add a reverb to this, it's going to a stereo FX channel. So it will, in fact, have some lead reverb on it. All right. It will get lead reverb and it will be stereo. So, but I want to add the lead verb to my bus. So how am I going to do that? How can I make these vocals Throw a lot of dollar, I'll be sound like they have reverb? Well, I just come here to my send, and I'm going to say, you know what? I want to send this lead vocal out to this FX channel, and it's not really sending it out. It's sending it there, but it's also sending it out to the main. This is basically, if you could just think of this, I'm going to say this in a non-technical way so you can grasp the concept. Pretend like this channel here is listening. This plugin is just listening for something to come to it. When it does, as I have done here, I can dial in the amount that I want to send that I want this one to hear and I want it to hear a lot or I don't want it to hear that much. If I want it to hear a lot, what's going to happen is this reverb is going to create the sound on this track of the reverbed sound. So here it goes. Let's do it. Throw a lot of dollar all the bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters going to... So the reverb that you're hearing is not really on this track here. The reverb is actually over here because it's listening to this vocal. And you can just picture the vocal going through this thing here and getting some reverb. And you're dialing in the amount of reverb you want on this track. So an even simpler way of listening or saying this is I'm going to send this vocal to the reverb this amount of reverb or this is how much reverb I want on these vocals right here. These vocals right here, I want this amount of reverb. Throw a lot of dollar all the bills in the sky. You can also pan your reverb. Throw a lot of dollar all the bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters gon' try. Bring us down, but I'll be like nah. You can pan your reverb. You can go pre or post fader, which I will cover. Now, when you use a reverb as a send effect, as I'm doing here, it is very important that you set up your reverb so that the mix, see this dry, wet, is 100%. Some reverbs, when you insert them, they're only like 50%, 42%, depending on how they're set up. You need to ensure that you go to 100%, and this one starts enabled already in send mode, and it locks the mix to 100%, so you ain't got nothing to worry about. Don't mind this mix here. This is your early reflections to reverb mix. I can do a mixture between my early reverb, early reflections, and my reverb. 
and that's all that's for. So don't worry about that one. This is the dry wet mix. This is the one that needs to be 100% because I'm using it as a scent effect. However, if you put reverb onto a actual channel strip, that's when you might want have to dial in the reverb to a certain percentage. So here we have True Verb by Waves. And if you notice, it has what's called Direct. Okay, and usually when you first bring the plug in, direct mode is enabled. Well, here's how this works. It has what's called the distance parameter. And if you read the manual, it talks about traditional send mode and using the through mode for true distance processing. And there are some reverbs that work in this fashion, so you need to read the manual. You can actually learn a lot from reading manuals, okay? Those of you guys trying to learn stuff. Read the F RTFM, read the fucking manual, right? So in order to get the best result, they're recommending that you put it directly on the track that you want to process and you turn direct mode on. So instead of having it in send mode like it is here, you would put it directly on what you're processing and you would turn the direct mode on. Now, right now, if you're using it in a send fashion like right here, I would make sure that the direct mode is off. However, if I'm using it on a track like right here, you would ensure that the direct mode is on. Now make sure you read the manual. When you have the direct mode on, your distance parameter is going to have more of a realistic effect is what they are saying. So that's another type of reverb that you need to be making your considerations and understanding that you need to ensure that you're using it properly. But before I cover pre or post fader, let me cover something else right quick. Let me just uh, drag this one over here or better yet, let me just click here and say lead verb. I'm going to dial in some rever lead reverb on that one too, since they're both lead elements. Throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky. So I'm going to dial in just a little bit less reverb. Throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters going to try. And if I go to this track here, my beat, I'm just going to drag that all the way over there. Come on, baby, move on over. There we are. in the sky keep it real but these haters gonna try bring us down but i'll be like nah -uh. you think you fly but you know that's a lie throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky so i will play it like that and then i'll take the reverb off throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky keep it real but these haters gonna try and we'll do it without the instrumental Throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky keep it real but these haters gonna try i can also turn it off here I can also change the reverb amount with this. Throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky. Keep it real, but these haters. Which you may do for some final reverb adjustment across the whole entire mix if you're going to do that. So we got the reverb set up. You guys see how a send works. I create a send. I just dial in the amount. I can create sends for delays, anything. Now let's go over pre fader and post fader. So check this out. As I'm playing the audio for this lead vox track, throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky. If I turn this down, I'm playing it right now. You don't hear anything. All right. Well, let's turn this up. Pre fader, which means before the fader, that the audio is being sent to this lead reverb, and the fader here is not going to affect the amount and you'll still get sent to the reverb regardless so let's turn it down now i'm going to play it with it being pre-fader the audio is being still sent from this track pre-fader the send is and it's still going to the reverb I'll, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click this on and off this pre-fader button you'll see it goes away so as you can see pre-fader sends it pre-fader and the volume adjustments you make on this bus are not going to affect the, affect the volume. Now, you usually want to maintain your post fader, and here's why. Let's say you're going to automate this lead vocal track. During the instrumentation, there's some parts that are louder than others. You know, whatever you may want to automate the level of this vocal for. Well, in post fader mode that you see here, if I play this and I bring this down, I want you to listen to the reverb. Throw a lot of dollar dollar bills. Keep it real, but these haters go. You hear how the reverb comes down and follows my automation? Okay, it's very important because I've already so eloquently set my reverb and I do not want to mess with the balance. And I'll show you what I mean by this. Now, when would you want to use a 
pre-fader mode. Well, there's a couple of different scenarios where you might, and a good example, a very good example is, let's say you're doing some film or you're trying to do an effect where someone is walking away from you. So pretend like I'm rapping and for some reason I'm walking out the door. Well, as I walk out the door, my direct sound, the sound from me, from my voice, to you is going to start to get lower however the reverb in the room may remain constant so you could also say let's say footsteps someone's walking away and you have the sound of the footsteps um, you could lower the volume and this footsteps reverb will remain constant because they're still in the room however they are going further away the sound source which is the foot hitting the ground or in this instance my voice coming directly from my mouth as I move away that direct sound gets lower so watch as i lower this and i'm walking away from you throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky keep it real but these haters gonna try so i walk through this elusive cave somewhere for some reason doing this little rap which would be totally weird and awkward but you get the idea another reason is for cue mixes and control room type stuff um but i'm not gonna get into that so let me go through. I'm going to go route some more vocals right quick. Let's see. I have a hook over here, a hook portion. Let me go up to that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to route this hook. I want this hook portion right here, which is my center, since it's pan center. And I'm going to do some special effects to that. And I want to add my own compression to this separate from these because these are like a stress um, overdub type thing. I'll route this to its own bus. So I'm going to say add bus for selected tracks. It's going to be bus one. I'll remember that. Then I'll select these two. Add bus for selected tracks. That's going to be bus two. So then I can come over here and I will go to the mixer and I'll rename this bus right here. PHC, which is my PHC bus, my pre-hook center bus. And I will name this one pre-hook left and right because it's a pre-hook it's basically not the real hook it's a transition into the hook and I'm gonna go ahead and color this yellow and I'm gonna color this one yellow so now those are routed to these buses okay I'm gonna go ahead and slide this one right here and then I'm gonna select both of these and slide them all the way over because I like to keep them all over here so there we go. I got those routed now. And I could throw some compression and reverb on there. So there you go. I just added a quick bus and did some routing. And I can throw on some reverb if I have to. Now, this is where people start to have issues. And I see this even by professional mix engineers on YouTube. Okay. And let's say I want all these vocals to go to a... I'm going to delete these because I don't need them. Okay. For this demonstration. That was just a quick demonstration of how you can add a bus real quickly and do some routing. Now, on YouTube and other places, and a lot of people do this, let's say I want to process all these vocals through a tape emulation plugin, such as Waves Kramer Tape, or through a distortion plugin for some reason. I just want to, and also, let's say EQ, I want to be able to EQ and compress all the vocals together with a different compression ratio, basically to gel all of the elements together. So what I would do is I click these buses, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bus for those. So I'm basically routing these two buses to another bus, and I'll name this All Vox. Vaz. Vox. And I'm going to color that green. I usually color the All Vox bus always green. So I'm going to slide that over here. So that's usually how I do my organization. And... You notice how this says now it's going to the all vox bus and this one's going to the all vox bus now this is where people mess up so i'm gonna throw an eq on here right quick let's say i want to do some final eq to my vocals for some reason who knows i'll just dial in something right quick okay and then i want to do some compression on there some final compression to gel it however i might use a smaller ratio like let's just say 1.7 to 1 soft knee and um you know Kind of a slow attack, longer release, take off adaptive. There we go. Now, let's check and see if these vocals are in fact going to this bus. So now as you can see, these buses are going to this bus. And now I can do processing to all of the vocals together. Throw a lot of dollar dollar bills in the sky Keep it real, but these haters gonna try Bring us down, but I'll be like, nah -uh. You think you fly, but you know that's a lie 
Okay, so we got that going on. I am now compressing and EQing all vocals that are going to this bus. Now this is where you run into problems and even some professional mix engineers that have videos on YouTube and even other people I see doing this and they probably don't realize it so you're probably going to slap yourself in your face when you when you see what I'm about to show you. And that is, let's say you want to automate the whole vocals. So I sent all my vocals here so I could do some processing and EQ to all the vocals as one element but also so I could do my automation of all vocals throughout the mix. So let's automate this and see what happens. Throw a lot of dollar these haters go as you can hear the reverb is still there so you're like okay let's go pre-fader no not gonna work whenever you send a bus to another bus if you have send effects because sometimes i will use a back reverb a separate reverb set up differently so i want to put it on the bus i do not want to put Although you could reverb on the all vox bus because I like to mix my reverb and sometimes I pan my reverbs for certain elements. Well, in order for me to have the reverb also go down with this fader so that any automation I do does not affect the balance that I've so eloquently, um, you know, set up. Well, this is how you do it. You need to ensure that your lead reverb or whatever reverb you got going to that send on that bus also goes to the all vox bus. So now as I lower it, the reverb also goes down. I maintain my balance so automation will not affect the reverb balance. Now what you could do is some type of special effect stuff if you want to do it and also create a sense of distance during certain things. But just to give you some ideas is right now I got to set back to main. So if I bring this volume down, the reverb is going to stay there. Okay, as we've already seen, because I don't have it also going to the all vox bus. So as I bring this down, it's going to stay there. However, if you take a compressor and compress the hell out of the vocals, this is the way it should sound. However, if I put it back to main, what's happening is as it's compressing it, it's leaving the reverb there. So if I'm doing an extreme amount, however, during automation also, as I bring this down, since it's going to the main, it will create a sense of space the more I bring down the volume. Now, that's usually not a typical scenario that you want to duplicate when you're doing songs. I'm just giving you another idea of an effect that you could use, and that is maintaining reverb amount the same way we were doing with the pre and post fader and the footsteps walking away. You can still accomplish that here. Now let's talk about another element of routing and that is side chaining. So I'm just going to right click here anywhere and just go add effects channel and I'm going to name this delay throw. And then I'm going to click on this, make it red. There we go. And this is what's going to happen. I'm going to create a delay throw. So just follow me along here. I'm going to create an analog delay right here. Dial in some saturation. Make sure the mix is locked at 100%. Bring this to stereo. Throw in some feedback just a little bit. The high cut or the low pass filter, I'll just set it right here. And then the high pass or also called a low cut filter, I'll just bring it to, let's say right there. It is synced to a quarter note for a delay throw. And this thing's set up. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to throw on a compressor to compress the delay. I'm going to set it, let's say, 4 to 1 ratio, no knee, take off look ahead, keep adaptive on, and I'll go with the fastest attack, and I'm going to go with a slow release, let's say, 400 milliseconds. Okay, we got that set up. So what are we doing here? Well, I'm going to turn this compressor off, and I'm going to dial in some delay to a delay throw to these stresses. So I'm going to go here. There's that delay throw. All right, I'm going to dial some in. And we are going to go make sure we are on these vocals. And we are. Throw a lot of dollar, all the bills in this. However, you're only going to hear the delay on these tracks because those two tracks are routed to the stress, lead stress bus. And I'm adding the delay throw on there. So what's going to happen is you're going to hear the delay with the feedback and it's going to echo because that's what feedback does. Dollar, all the, dollar, all the, guy, 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 guy. So that's what you're hearing. So that's a little delay throw. It throws the delay. Now, let's say I want to 
use this delay throw, but it's during a portion of the mix where the stresses, there's a lot of stresses. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let me scroll over here. Let's say this portion here. During this portion, the delay throw might sound cool. Shut up, shut up. Like Michael Jackson said, you know who's bad. who's bad. However, once we get to a part that's really busy like this, you gonna bite, but you can't top that. And that you wanna fight, you can leave with the it might be a little bit too busy. So this is what I want to accomplish. I want during this portion of the vocals, I want the delay to be turned down. Okay, well, you're probably thinking, well, I could just compress it the hell out of it, right? And that's what I'm going to do. So let's collapse that. I'm going to turn that on. And if I compress it right here, I'm basically just compressing the delay and anything that's being sent to the delay. And if I'm only sending a small amount, then that's what's going to be compressed. However, I'm going to do what's called sidechain delay throw. Here's how this works. When I sidechain this compressor and click on this sidechain button, I'm basically telling this compressor to listen for something that I'm going to route to its sidechain. So sidechain, it is now waiting for something to listen to. Well, as I said, if I just leave it here, it's only going to compress the delay. I want it to compress based on a different sound source. I want the compressor to be compressed by using the actual lead stress dry vocals. Okay, so here's how this, or basically the compressed, kind of like dry vocals, all right? So here's what's going to happen. I got my delay throw in there, but I need to send a side chain or basically send this out to the side chain of the delay throw compressor, which is insert number two. What does that mean? Well, it is insert number two. It's on my delay throw FX channel. So if I come over here and go here, side chain, send this dry vocal that's been EQ'd and compressed to the side chain right there. Now, you usually want to set this unity. I just hold control and click and it automatically puts it to zero. And in order for this to work, you, you always need to put it pre-fader. That means that any adjustment on here is not going to affect the amount that's going to the compressor. And let me show you what I mean. So now I'm compressing based on this compressor is not listening to the delay. This compressor is listening to the vocals that are coming from this track to activate the delay. And that's going to compress the delay based on this track. And I'm going to show you why you might want to do that here shortly. So I'm going to open this, play it. Remember, we are now, um, we are still post fader. You gonna bite, but you can't talk. I'm gonna dial in a shit ton of compression. You gonna bite, but you can't talk there. And that you wanna fight, you can leave. Now, here's where the problem comes. If I turn this down. You gonna bite, but you can't talk there. You gonna bite, but you can't talk. You gonna bite, but you can't talk there. And that. It's turning down, and if you look at my compressor here. You gonna bite, but you can't talk there. Nothing's happening. There is nothing happening here. Well, that's because I turned down the signal and it's not pre-fader. However, if I turn it pre-fader, watch what happens to the compressor. Remember, let me mute this so you can only hear these vocals right here. You gonna bite, but you can't talk that. Which is my stress element. Okay, that's these two tracks, which come in and add emphasis, but I added emphasis to this whole portion. So I'm gonna go here. I got this right here, and I'm going to lower the volume. And watch what happens to the compressor. You gonna bite. It's still compressing. It is still maintaining my compression on that delay. This way, when I automate the lead stress, if I am going to automate the lead stress element, it maintains its compression at that amount. So the delay will maintain its compression regardless of what the fader is here. Why might I, I want to do all this? I'm going to show you. During this portion of the track, I want to have that delay throw because the delay throw does sound good. Right here. Don't say nothing. Shut up. Don't say nothing. Shut up. Shut up. Like. And this is what's happening. I have the compressor's release set so that as it's compressing the stress overdubs. Don't say nothing. Whenever there's a gap or after a phrase is said, if there's enough gap, my release determines to release the compression, which will bring the volume. So think of a compressor as what this really is, which is a volume turn downer. It compresses and lowers, let's just say, in this instance, I'm lowering the volume or compressing it. 
And what's going to happen is my release, you got to play with your release here. And I tailor my release to release compression so that during the gaps, it does a delay throw. And a delay throw means that when something pauses and there's a gap, the, the delay comes out and you can hear it. Don't say nothing. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. If I lower my release, it, the volume will come back and this will release compression even faster and you'll hear the delay and more of the feedback even more. Don't say nothing. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. However, if I increase the release time, Don't say nothing. Shut up. Shut up. Like you hear how you do not hear the delay because the release is so slow. Don't say nothing. Shut up. So it's like, why do I even have a delay on there? I'm not even doing the effect that I want. I want to have it so that, and you have to do this while listening, during the gaps, the delay comes in and comes into full volume on the end of the feedbacks. Don't say nothing, shut up, shut up, like Michael Jackson said, you know who's bad, who's bad, we bad, I bet you gonna... And you notice that once the voice starts again, for instance, when I say, who's bad... Don't say nothing, shut up, shut up, like Michael... So in this gap right here... After I say shut up on my stress, you can actually hear the delay. Shut up like Michael Jackson. However, right here where I'm saying this right here. You know who's bad, who's bad. I don't want that delay to be going on when I say who's bad again. I want whenever I am saying stuff, the delay to go away. So basically, I got a lot of people here who don't understand all this. I got to explain it in the most simplest manner. When I'm saying stuff, the delay is turned down. When I am not saying things, I want the delay to come out. That's called a delay throw. Now, you can do this by automation. You can either automate the delay throw fader for the amount. You can automate the bypass or insert or even the delay, and you can just remove this compressor and just automate the delay. However, a simpler fashion is to use this delay throw and you know, it all depends on how you want to do it. So, again, I want you to listen to the delay and the feedback. The feedback, let me just go because some of you guys don't understand this. The feedback is this. When I say, when it does the delay, it's going to keep repeating like an echo. I'm going to turn it off. No, who's bad? You only hear one delay. The delay that you're hearing is the quarter note delay, which is synced to the tempo. And at 97.5, you can find the actual millisecond value just by clicking on that. So I know a quarter note is 615 milliseconds. There's a little tip. So here we are, and I have no feedback. You're just going to hear the single delay. No, who's bad? Now I'm going to turn this up, and you're going to hear a bunch of echoes fade out. No, who's bad? If I turn it up even more, they stay louder for longer. No, who's bad? If I turn it all the way up, well, they'll probably go forever. You can also boost that. No, who's bad? I'm going to turn that off because I have no reason to do that. That's just so you can automate it. You can automate this channel here, oh, channel, this value, and you can create some effects, okay? So I'm just going to dial in a little bit of the feedback. Now, one more time. This is what it's doing for all the slow people. No offense. We love you. No, who's bad? Who's bad? We bad. I want you to listen to right here when I start to say, we bad. we bad, you will notice that in this very little gap right here, the delay is present. However, once we get to here and I say anything, the compressor compresses that delay again, turning it down, thereby getting rid of the delay during the vocal portions. And I am doing this because I am using the actual vocal from here and I'm doing it pre-fader. So, one more time, let's listen. Pay attention to this gap. When the delay comes in and then it disappears. Here we go. Like Michael Jackson said, you know who's bad, who's bad, we bad, I bet you gonna bite. And the main reason that I'm doing this, the compression method, is because during this portion, I don't want these to be delayed because we are delaying these two here, which are being sent to that stress, le to that stress bus. I want these to maintain a low volume, just the delay, okay? I want the delay to basically be turned all the way down so you can't hear it. 
Otherwise, it's going to sound too busy. Fight, but you can't talk that. And that you want to fight, you can leave with all that. Yeah, walk back. So you notice when I say all that, the delay comes in. With all that. Yeah, walk by with a smile on my face. While you in line, I'm go okay, so that is the purpose of a side chain delay throw. And you have basically learned. Now, if you go and research side chaining some more, you can see how you can use side chaining the kick and the vocals so that the kick and the vocals do not clash and stuff like that. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with side chaining. Um, you can do more research. This is basically just showing some routing that I use during the pitched Vox tutorials DVD. Now I would then send this to the all Vox bus just so I can maintain everything. So now I'm going to talk about event effects. If you notice these events right here, these actual events have little effects in the bottom lower left corner. All right, we're going to scroll down here and we're going to see how this works. I love the way Studio One handles it. And in other programs, these audio things might be called events. Um, they have other names for them. And what's going to happen is I want to add a delay only to this event, not to the track, not to anywhere else, just to this event. Well, in Studio One, here's how you do it. You don't just drag it to the event, which I would like them to have that in future versions for you to be able to do that. You actually have to click on the event that you want to have the effect on and click enable event effects right here all right then you drag your effect let's say a delay not there you gotta drag it over here all right and now i'm gonna dial in something i'm not gonna lock the percentage because i need to be able to adjust the wet percentage i'm gonna dial in some saturation leave the width of what it is just these a little bit i'm gonna do a quarter note delay and let's listen to that Okay, it's delaying the whole thing. I'm going to go in, I'm going to adjust the mix percentage down a little bit. Okay, well, that's not what I'm after. If I listen to this one here, you notice there's no event effects. There's nothing happening. It's only on this event. No other event has the effect, only this one. No, my big, no, my big, That's not what I really want to do. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to basically remove it. So there's no event effects on there. And what I'm going to do is I want this last portion to do an echo throw. Ha. I want it to go, ha, 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 right? So this is how you do it. I got to split the event. I could press three on my keyboard, but I'm just going to press the thing here, and I'm going to split it with my knife tool right there. I'm going to drag this down and zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Click this. And now I'm going to th throw the delay throw or throw the delay on this. Not this event, but this one. Just on that word. Remember, you don't drag it here. You got to drag it over here. So now this one has the delay throw. I got to reset my percentage. I got to reset my saturation. Still quarter note delay. Typical delay throw time. So here we go. Now this does not have the delay. Oh my big. No delay on that. The delay is now on the end part. So let's play that. Oh my big surprise. There you go. So that's a little delay throw on that word. Now, here's the beauty. I can click on render. And you see this tell? If I just click render, watch what happens. Oh my big surprise. Ha nothing well i'm going to restore that you need to ensure that you set your tail and you set your tail length i'm going to say i only want the delay to go out for two seconds actually just one second so now i got a tail and what is the tail uh, i have a hard time saying tail i think it's tail okay it's just the way i say it make fun of me if you want i'm now going to render it now you see it actually has a delay in there and it also puts a nice little fade out on there so let's listen to that oh my big surprise ha, ha. all right you know that's good just one little delay however i can always restore it goes back to what it was it keeps the tail however if i want to add two seconds i'll render that there we go oh my big surprise ha, 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 ha. there we go now here's the beauty and this is what I love about this. I can save this whole entire session, close it down, come back a year later, and I could say, restore that effect. I want to remove it. I'll set this to zero, just for shits and giggles. There we go. I'll close that. The effect is gone. However, I still got this 
part that's still here. So I will just remove that by bringing it down. And we are back where we started. Oh, my big surprise. Ha. So there you go. That's how you had event effects. I, I use event effects, especially when I'm doing my editing to certain vocals that are mono. Mono and the type of effect combination and editing I do is where the secret lies. And it's how I do it. So it's on the DVD. Pitched Vox Tutorials DVD. So that's it. I hope you guys learned something. Um, if you're new to Presonus Studio One, this might help you out. And if you're used to doing the effects the way I see some people doing on Adobe Audition on the YouTube channels, where they actually double click the event, as I've said before, and actually right click audio, and then they might do an EQ or something like that. Well, that's not how you want to do it. Okay. So I've taught you how to do buses, tracks, sends some side chaining, a lot of stuff, everything you learned basically. So again, I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you did, go ahead and give me a like and go ahead and subscribe because I got more stuff coming in the future.